Welcome to Elected. I'm your host, Lou Gradel. Folks, one of the most closely watched elections in the country is happening just a few hours down the road. A special election on August 23rd to fill the New York 19th Congressional District seat is one of the first congressional races and the most hotly contested since the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. And the result of this face-off between two neighboring county executives could be a bellwether for what's going to happen to the two major parties in the midterms this November. The Republican candidate, Mark Molinaro, invited me out on the campaign trail to interview him over the course of his 12-hour campaigning day. Now, as a matter of disclosure, on my personal Twitter account, I have expressed support for Mark, but I wanted to set that all aside, and so I asked him questions on a whole range of topics. No question was off limits, and nothing was coordinated with the campaign. I'd also like to extend an open invitation to Molinaro's Democratic opponent, County Executive Pat Ryan, to come on my show and take some questions in a fair interview. Now, with all of that out of the way, here's my day on the campaign trail with Mark Molinaro. Our first stop of the day was at a Republican committee chairs meeting in Ulster County, where Molinaro laid out just how important it is that he win this special election. Our strategy to winning in November is beating Pat Ryan in August. Uh, and the National Party, uh, the National Republican Con uh, Congressional Camp Committee um, needs this win. I need it, but th they need this win. Uh, and they are investing a huge amount of money uh, to stop Pat Ryan in August. And our um, mutual interest, and to some degree concern, is that we just uh, work as best we can over the course of the next uh, uh, two weeks, I mean truly just two weeks, uh, to try uh, to slow him down and ultimately uh, win. Molinaro shared that his campaign's polls show him as the leader in this race. I remain 10 points ahead of him. In every configuration you can come up with, I remain 10 points ahead of uh, uh, Pat Ryan if our voters show up. And what happens uh, to the person who wins on August 23rd, and I say this uh, respectfully, is on August 23rd, whoever wins that race, the very next day will be able to raise another million dollars without any hesitation, because they go from being a county and local state elected official to being a member of Congress. Member of Congress, but a local elected officials can't take contributions from a whole host. I mean, this is sort of under the sheets, under the hood. They can't take contributions from people who do business on Wall Street or people who sell stocks. Why? Because we're in the business of buying and borrowing municipal bonds. So Colin and I are sort of at a point where fundraising will cap off, uh, and, and for me, until August 23rd. If Pat Ryan wins on August 23rd, the next day he raises another million dollars. The next day. And that puts him in the position of being a hell of a lot more competitive uh, against, uh, not Sean, but against Colin. Now, if Mark seems like a pro at this, it might be because he's been in elected office since he was my age. Mark Molinaro has been a public servant since 1995, and at age 19, he became the youngest mayor in America, which brought him some national media attention, like this piece from 48 Hours. Marcus Molinaro, the youngest mayor in the state of New York. The youngest, in fact, in the entire country. Do you know how old he is? Maybe about 20 some odd. No, not 20 some odd, he's 20. 20, I know he seems to be a fine man. I started as mayor as 19. Was it hard then? for them to respect you? Oh yeah, I, had, I was the kid. I was the kid mayor, I was the novelty for the year, uh, you know, whatever you, you, you want to yeah. call it. But uh, it took me a good uh, six to, to eight months to build a uh, sort of a reputation of actually not only being the kid mayor, but being an effective mayor. But what started as a novelty has turned into somewhat of a liability for Mark, with his Democratic opponents seizing on his longstanding public record and calling him a career politician something that Molinaro pushes back on. The, the, you know, the benefits of, of having served in local, state, and, 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 and county in office miles means that... Right onto salt point that guy's too loud. Means that, <laughs> <laughs> so okay. it means that I've built relationships. Uh, I've uh, 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 worked with countless numbers of people and um, have experience that I can now leverage uh, on behalf of, of the residents of the 19th Congressional District. It comes with... Um, missteps. It comes with mistakes. It comes with the, the choices that, you know, again, uh, uh, that, that, I, that, that I've made. So I don't look at it as, as baggage. We are a compilation of our experiences. Every life experience comes with the good and the bad. The difference is in public office, it's very easy to, to point to what, what I did or didn't do. My life's been very public since the day I turned 18. Right. It's, it's uh, you know, convenient for those who, who, 
who happen to live publicly to say, you know, they're, they're, they're only the, the successful things you see. One of those missteps, Mark says, was voting against same-sex marriage when he was a member of the state assembly many years ago. I, I've said publicly and, and, and privately, I, um, first it was my personal belief. I reflected what was generally the belief in my district, and it was generally the, the belief at the time. Uh, Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton had the same position I did. The second it became law, I celebrated it as a civil right, and now I believe firmly uh, that, uh, that it ought to be protected to adults entering into a loving relationship. Uh, is uh, protected under the 14th Amendment of the Constitution. Yeah. So if you face that same vote of, of same-sex marriage, you'd support it? Yeah. But now, as he hopes to be sent off to Congress, I asked Molinero about another job he aspired for in D.C. and whether he still thinks it's a possibility. Do you, in your heart of hearts, think that you will one day be the president? I don't know. Uh, I think I, I'd rather not say, because I, I, I think I, I'd rather have it be a goal that, uh, that, I, that I'll try to obtain. You'd rather not say because you're a politician. <laughs> no, I don't want to. It's one of those things that, uh, uh, yeah, in my heart of hearts, I want to be the president. But do you I, think I'd you rather, will be? I think I could be. I think I could be. You know, my granddad used to say, if you're going to, uh, uh, if you're going to aim for something, aim for the top. I mean, that's the way you do it. Um, and so, you know, when I said it all those years ago, you know, my firm belief was I, I could someday be in that position. I don't live my life that way anymore. Um, you know, I, I, I just feel like elections are very uh, very much about the voters and wherever public service takes me next, it takes me next. Um, you know, I think I've gone from sort of pointing to this, you know, focus of uh, uh, attaining that to simply being a public servant. And, and what, what happens next um, is, isn't up to me. That's, that's the way I, I sort of frame it now. You know, I think, and, and I've, I've enjoyed, you know, doing things, right? I've enjoyed governing. I've enjoyed delivering results. And where, wherever it ends up, it ends up. So 2024? <laughs> no. <laughs> good, uh, good morning, everyone. Hope you're enjoying yourselves. Welcome uh, to our Veterans Appreciation Day. Thank you for coming to Camp New Teaming. Are you having a nice time so far? Our second stop of the day was at a veterans picnic in Dutchess County, where Molinero has been the county executive for the past 11 years. And while the county executive did his level best to shake the hand of all 400 people at the event, our driver for the day, a campaign volunteer named JP, did his best to keep him on schedule. Five minutes. But even though we were on a tight schedule, Molinero made some time for a little horsing around. So about 10 minutes later, we got in the car and headed to our next event. As we were driving along, I noticed that Mark had two additional polo shirts in the back in case, well, in case he spills his coffee, my coffee. But with all of the small talk and shirt talk out of the way, it was time to get into the real issues. All right. Can we, uh, can we talk about abortion? <laughs> sure. Go jump right At the Supreme Court today, an historic upheaval. Following the Supreme Court's overturning of Roe v. Wade, abortion has become a key issue in the MY19 race, with Molinero's opponent Pat Ryan releasing this campaign ad on the day of the decision. He fought for our families, for our freedom. And freedom includes a woman's right to choose. How can we be a free country if the government tries to control women's bodies? That's not the country I fought to defend. During the debate the day before my interview with Mark, things got pretty contentious between the candidates on the issue of whether Molinero would support a nationwide abortion ban, despite him being pretty clear that he would oppose it. Will you support efforts to um, pass a federal ban on abortion? I don't, uh, no, I don't believe that after the Supreme Court decision that the federal government or Congress has much of a role at all. And that is, in fact, the decision of the Supreme Court. Pat Ryan claimed that Molinero didn't actually answer the question. I mean, unless I missed something, he again didn't answer your question, which is your party, the, the increasingly far right extremist Republican Party, led by Kevin McCarthy, who endorsed you, and Elise Stefanik, who endorsed you, are loudly proudly calling for a national ban on abortion. So one, I'd like to ask, will you specifically oppose that ban? 
I just said it, Pat. She asked me, would you oppose a ban? I said, I said, would you would you, would you vote for a ban? My my position is I do not believe the federal government has the right to establish a restriction. That's not the, the question. You're, you're getting tricky, as you always try to do. I don't always try to do it, and it's in it and it is consistent. You know, like, I, 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 I think that the question is that I asked was it a yes or no question, no Mark. And I said no. You asked me, would you support a nationwide ban? I said no. I believe that the state, okay. the Supreme Court, has limited the authority of the federal government to act. And beyond that, well, it's Pat's time, so I won't I won't step on any any more of it. But I, I I've answered that question. What you're saying to millions of Americans is you have a role. You're going to get in there. You're going to get in there and tell them what decision they should make or not. So you got to pick one way or the other. Uh, and and again, and I expressed my view. I did. OK, you're going to interrupt me again. Well, we now have to move on. So on the way to our next event, I decided to have a more substantive conversation with Mark on the issue and see where he so, stands. Uh, I'm personally pro-life. Uh, I had accepted that. Um, Roe was uh, established law in this country. Uh, the Supreme Court decided otherwise. And so uh, whether one agrees with that or not, uh, the matter returns to uh, state governments and for state governments uh, and their legislatures to establish what is appropriate for them. Uh, I uh, accept and, and believe now that there is a very limited, if any, role for the federal government uh, and rather the matter has to be addressed uh, by states and, and, and their legislatures. The sad truth? Mark Molinaro and the Republicans oppose a woman's right to choose. National Democrats released an attack ad against Molinaro on the issue of abortion. In Congress, they will vote for a nationwide abortion ban. So you wouldn't support a nationwide abortion ban? I uh, said yesterday and just say again, I, I don't see that there is a role for the federal government, and therefore I, I couldn't I couldn't see where or how the state could restrict access, excuse me, the federal government could restrict access uh, in any more than it could expand access uh, uh, and override the authority of states. On a personal level, are there restrictions or exceptions uh, that you do support, uh, things that... Yeah, you know, I've always, um, listen, I, again, I... I um, I, I believe in preserving um, uh, life and emerging life. Um, I've uh, said that uh, uh, rape, incest, life of the mother, um, and I also acknowledge that they're, um, you know, they're, this is a very personal, very difficult um, choice for, uh, for women. I just think like most Americans, uh, there ought to be thoughtful limitations. I, I uh, in particular, late-term abortion. Um, you know, at the very least, uh, we ought to be thinking about uh, the value of that emerging life and um, establishing what, what I would hope would be thoughtful limitations. In New York, uh, the right to access will remain broad as it is, despite uh, uh, my hope that perhaps uh, there be uh, some limits on late-term abortion. Uh, but uh, I think where we are at this point, and I think it's, it's important, is um, uh, with, the chain, with the court's decision, uh, to talk about what we value in life and what we value about life. Um, should there be more? Of course there should be more support for prenatal and ne neonatal care. There needs to be support for uh, moms, mothers who bring into the world uh, children with disabilities. Uh, my mother brought a child in the world with a, uh, uh, with a fatal disability that, that ultimately took my older brother's life very, very young. I, I know the heartache that, that she has shouldered ever since. Uh, additionally, uh, we ought to be talking about how we expand and, and support uh, adoption, adoption services. So all of those issues now become uh, an important part of, uh, uh, of the dialogue. And I think we ought to, ought to spend some time talking about it and then addressing that in this new, uh, in this new paradigm. We arrived at Coxsackie Riverside Park to visit with people at a festival with New York State Senator Sue Serino, the woman there next to him in the blue. While at the festival, Molinero made sure everyone knew when to vote for him. While we're on the topic of August 23rd, let's discuss why there's going to be a special election in New York's 19th Congressional District in the first place. Now, normally this would be a pretty long-winded explanation, but let's try and keep things brief, shall we? How about we put 50 seconds on the clock? <clears throat> 
Last year, the governor of New York, Andrew Cuomo, resigned for sexually harassing his employees and killing thousands of old people in nursing homes, so his lieutenant governor became the governor, and her name is Kathy Hochul. But Kathy Hochul, now the governor, had to pick a new lieutenant governor, so she picked Brian Benjamin. But Brian Benjamin committed some crimes, so he had to resign, so now Hochul needed a new, new lieutenant governor. Meanwhile, on MY19, Mark Molinaro announced his run for Congress against Antonio Delgado, who was seeking re-election to a third term in the seat, until Kathy Hochul called him and said, hey, do you want to run and be my new, new lieutenant governor? And Delgado said yes, so Hochul announced Delgado would be her new, new lieutenant governor. Delgado announced that he would be resigning from Congress, and Hochul set August 23rd as a day for a special election to fill Delgado's congressional seat until the end of 2022. So, Delgado resigned after he got picked by Hochul, after Benjamin resigned, after Hochul took office because Cuomo resigned, and Hochul was picked by Cuomo, whose gubernatorial opponent in 2018 was Mark Molinaro. Huh. <sighs> Let's go get some ice cream. Good, I'm, I'm a big person. What's that? I'm definitely going with banana one. Banana cream. Oh, was it good? Now my boyfriend. Still at the festival, we met up with State Assemblyman Chris Tigg at the Coxsackie Republican Club tent, where he joked that he might want to sow more confusion about when Molinero's special election actually was. That's right. I'm going to start walking around and say, vote on August 24th. <laughs> <laughs> Molinero's jokey rapport with Tig carried over to our next event, a meeting of the Coxsackie Gun Club. Chris Tig's coming. Oh, oh, Chris Tig's coming. Of course. They know. They know where the bread's buttered. <laughs> oh, sure, sure. Molinero said that if he was elected, he would be a check on the Democrats currently in control of the House of Representatives. If I win, and I think I do, um, we'll get to three seats. Uh, the majority only has three seats. Somebody's sick, somebody's out of town, they've got to stop everything. And honestly, these days, it'd be best just to slow him down. Molinero doesn't own any guns of his own or pretend to be some sort of gun enthusiast, unlike many other GOP Whoa. candidates. But he does say that he is a strong supporter of people's Second Amendment rights. Now, we've done a lot of driving so far. We're going to need to stop for gas. All right, Mark, we're at the gas station right now. And I think it's, what is it, 445? 445 for regular. Yeah, 495 uh, plus, 529. Uh, a premium. Um, you know, I, I think there are a lot of people who don't appreciate um, the fact that we are still uh, nearly twice as much uh, per gallon of gas today uh, than we were uh, a little uh, under a year ago. But as importantly, upstate New York is uh, sort of doubly penalized. Um, no mass transit, no public transportation. You're driving to work multiple miles. Maybe you're working on farms. We have multiple pieces of equipment. Diesel's still very high. You're driving your kids miles and back and forth to after school activities or to soccer club or whatever. All of it adds up, and fuel costs really put a pinch on everyone. In fact, the last this jobs report for just a few days ago suggests that there are so many more people who they're seeing their retirements de uh, depleted, their time, retirement funds depleted. Uh, they can't pay, uh, make ends meet, so they're going back to work. Some are holding multiple jobs. Uh, many are underemployed. And so the burden just remains. You cannot, um, uh, as the president does, celebrate 50 cents less per gallon. Uh, than we were just a few uh, weeks ago. The burden is still too great and it's going to continue to compound. Are you okay? We, uh, I got umbrellas. But... It started to sprinkle as we were headed off to the Hunter Fire Company for a block party they were holding. Safely under the cover of a tent, Molinero tried his hand at one of the carnival games, but I think he's hoping for better luck come August 23rd. <laughs> Now, Molinero's years of on-the-job political training came into full view when he was able to somehow keep concentration on his conversation with these two people while a rather interesting scene was going on in the background. And after stopping for a while to speak with a journalist for the left-leaning news outlet, The Huffington Post, we were on our way to the next event. <laughs> So, talk to me about your opponent, Pat Ryan. Why should people vote for you over him? Well, listen, I, I, um, I've spent every day of my adult life trying to make government function for people. Um, I learned a long time ago uh, as a village official that when the, uh, when the roof leaks, it leaks on Republicans and Democrats, and the job of uh, an elected official uh, is to make sure that we fix the roof. And uh, I just uh, will say that, uh, you know, I've, I've worked with Republicans and Democrats to confront issues that have faced uh, the Upper Hudson River Valley, the Catskills, uh, communities in the southern tier. The dynamic between the two candidates during their debate was pretty tense, though it seemed like Molinero was trying to lower the temperature. I want to point out, though, what what my opponent just did there, which is... It's Mark. You can call me Mark that. <laughs> okay. What Mark just did there, which is not answer your question, number one. 
know, Pat and I uh, are friends. Uh, I, I hope that we will be friends after uh, this election. I think he's, uh, frankly, taken some low blows that are unnecessary. Um, I don't, uh, for a moment, question his service. And um, I think that people who want to give of themselves in public service um, should be encouraged. Uh, as, as Bobby Kennedy once said, uh, you know, it's a dignified duty if, uh, if you're earnest and honest about it. Is that your last lawn sign there? It's the last until Monday when we get another 5,000. I love lawn signs. <laughs> Molinero does not like lawn signs. He says they're a highly ineffective tool for campaigning and that the best purpose they serve is to annoy the candidate trying to figure out if he has more than the other guy. However, he does like his business cards that have his personal email and cell phone number on the back of them that he handed to almost every single voter that we met throughout the day which might be a reason why we were running a little low on those, too. That is the last of my business cards. You're out of business. Out of business. Good. Good. Where'd she go? Next up, we are off to a car show in Greene County with State Senator Sue Serino, Assemblyman Chris Tague, and you? Greene County Sheriff Pete Kaminsky. So far, I'm okay. <laughs> oh, you'll enjoy, you'll enjoy the sheriff. Oh, what do you got? Next one. Oh, good. Oh, I'm going to be, I think I'm going to be my car. Yes. 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 over now to <laughs> the first time right. in public. Yes. Billy Reverka Band. So Take it away, so you guys. And I feel so helpless. Oh, no. We have the opportunity to get together as we were approaching the end of our campaigning day, it was time for Molinero to loosen up a little bit and have some fun. All righty, so what is your go-to from the ice cream truck? Oh, well, I, either orange uh, creamsicle or bomb pop. Those, those, those are my... You know, my okay, and another easy question. Yeah. Did Joe Biden win the 2020 election? Uh, I am woefully aware that Joe Biden won the 2020 election. And uh, we have an opportunity on August 23rd to send a message to him uh, that the people of the 19th Congressional District uh, have had enough of bad policies and decisions undermining uh, safety of the economy and, quite frankly, uh, provide a bit of a check and balance. Would you have voted to certify the results if you were there on January 6th? I think the work of Congress, uh, the House of Representatives, is to certify whatever the states provide. That again? Despite maintaining to me that Joe Biden won the 2020 presidential election, Molinero, when campaigning throughout the day, made several references to election fraud, albeit in a joking manner. Here's the only thing. Congressional races, Senate races, Assembly races, they mean a lot. They get decided by a handful of votes, and they get counted. And not, listen, I, I've been told a lot of dead people in my vote, so we need some living ones out. That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> what was your view on the January 6th attack? It was, uh, listen, I, I've said this consistently. It is um, a horrible embarrassment in this country. We do not uh, resort to violence, by the way, at the U.S. Capitol or on the streets of our cities uh, to move a political point. Uh, we engage in civil discourse uh, and those uh, responsible for uh, violating any laws that help count. The president bears responsibility for Wednesday's attack on Congress by mob rioters. He should have immediately denounced the mob when he saw what was unfolding. Kevin McCarthy said that President Trump bears some responsibility for those attacks. Do you agree on that? Everyone who's been account, everyone who's uh, had a part to play uh, ought to take responsibility. Uh, and we ought to, as a country, be sure that we never repeat uh, uh, the, kind of, uh, 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 the kind of embarrassment that we have. Including President Trump? Everybody should be held accountable. Uh, and at the end of the day, we ought to be focused on uh, ensuring that we never repeat the episode. And now, as we were off to our final event of the night, I wanted to ask Mark about an issue of personal importance for him, advocating for those with disabilities. Um, but you've proposed a pretty ambitious plan on, on the issue of special education and yeah. inclusive education. Uh, why don't you talk about what that means to you and in including students with disabilities? Yeah, first, I mean, keep in mind, um, in particular in education, but overall, you, you bring a child uh, into this world with a disability, you um, spend the rest of your life having to uh, claw and advocate uh, for that individual's um, 
services and support, basic life supporting services that, by the way, any other person um, without uh, a, um, uh, a disability uh, never has to advocate for. And, and what I've said consistently is that what this country has done to those living with disabilities uh, isn't just a disservice, it's, it's criminal. Uh, it is a violation of one's human rights, uh, civil rights, and constitutional rights to uh, be dismissed in the way that, uh, that we treat those with disabilities. There's not adequate support, there's not adequate services, there's not adequate access. As Dutchess County Executive, Molinero launched the Think Differently initiative, which seeks to change the way communities relate to their neighbors of varying abilities. One of the inspirations for the program is his daughter, who's on the autism spectrum. When it comes to education, um, you know, I have four children. Um, uh, uh, three of them uh, will walk through uh, the door uh, uh, on the first day of school uh, without me having to ask for anything. Uh, one of whom uh, I have to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat with uh, uh, public education to provide access uh, uh, to basic uh, um, uh, education services. I think every kid deserves to have uh, the ability uh, to learn in the way they learn and to achieve in the way they achieve. Um, so for me, what that means for uh, those with special education, first the federal government needs to subsidize and live up to its commitment uh, to fund more adequately special education. That will also uh, not only provide direct access and support, but, but drive down property taxes because the dollars the federal government invests in special ed goes directly to school districts. Uh, it doesn't go to Albany, it goes directly to school districts to drive down costs. So you get the benefit of, of lower school taxes as well. And then throughout that child's life, that, that individual education plan, um, that IEP, needs to, uh, um, uh, needs to be adhered to, needs to evolve, and there, and there needs to be um, a, an expectation that the child gets the support and the services they need to achieve the success that they define for themselves. That's just K-12. Every community college in America needs a college level experience for those with disabilities. There needs to be broader expansion of access to employment and job opportunities for those with disabilities. We need more housing and transportation connection. And families as they get older need to be able, need to know uh, that their loved one will have the support they deserve, which is why uh, making um, uh, this state continues, and the federal government uh, through Medicare and Medicaid reimbursement rates, makes it even, even more difficult to welcome direct care staff into uh, employment. All of those obstacles and barriers need to be confronted because a child with a disability deserves the same right, has the same right, deserves the same access, the same opportunity to achieve success as anyone else. And failure to meet that is a, is a, is a failure to meet their, their basic uh, human rights. A draw. A draw. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's late. got it. <laughs> you let me win. <laughs> so easy even a politician can do it. Oh, yeah. yeah For our yeah, final yeah. event of the day, we went to the Ulster County Fair with State Senator Sue Serino. Nice smile. <laughs> We walked all around the fair, and as you can probably tell by this photo, I was really enjoying my surroundings. And while Mark wanted to get me on a ride... We're going that one over there, Luke. Sounds like a plan. Yeah, as we approached, I started getting a little nervous. It's that one there, too. The guitar one? Yeah. That's easy. Just that one with my kids. It's safe. It's only falling over once. Thanks, Mark. Very reassuring. But the line was getting a little bit long, so we decided to go with the next best thrill, saying hello to the local Democrats. Now, this specific interaction at the Ulster County Fair became the subject of some tweets by liberal activists saying that Molinero was slimy and accusing him of giving non-consensual handshakes. They even created this totally real and very helpful warning graphic for any future events. But as someone who was there, I can attest that this was a respectful, friendly, and reasonably funny interaction. I wish you 49% luck. Yeah. Very funny. Ah, hey, listen. Right <laughs> yeah, that's good. Awesome. Would like to come by. We've had our high numbers today. So with a full day out on the campaign trail behind me and every question crossed off my list, it was time for me to head home. I want to give a huge thank you to Mark Molinero, State Senator Sue Serino, Assemblyman Chris Tagg, and our driver for the day, JP. 
I hope that this interview gave you a better sense of who Mark Molinaro is as a person, where he stands on the issues, and what his priorities will be if he is elected to Congress. And if you live in New York's 19th Congressional District, then be sure to get out and vote on... Bingo. Thanks for watching. Elected.